So thanks to the organizers for hosting this great event and for having us today. And I'm super excited to tell you about the AI Economist that is going to improve the quality and productivity with AI-driven tax policies. And this is work that's been together, done together with this great team. So the project in a nutshell is that we want to simulate an economy millions of times over to create fair tax policy. And in particular, the technique we're using is two-level reinforcement learning that is learning how to design a mechanism. Uh, and in a, in a way, this is a first step towards evaluating policies and AI simulations that we hope will make policy making less ideological and more data-driven in the future. And the motivation for this is that there has been a trend in the recent years that incomes have been growing at very, at very disparate rates. So if we look at the top 1%, they have seen their income grown, uh, grow multifolds compared to the bottom 20% in society. Uh, this is a trend in the US, but also globally. And it's just, you know, lets a well-documented uh, downstream effects in society. So the question is, how can economists and policymakers actually improve these kinds of economic outcomes? And in practice, what we see is that often there's too little data for a lot of the modern economy's uh, problems. Um, traditional economics very often uses very simple reductive models uh, to model people, entities like governments and so on. And thirdly, real world experimentation is very hard because for instance, we cannot have two versions of the United States running in parallel to look at a control group for a tax policy. So tax policy in particular focuses a lot on the trade-off between equality and productivity. Um, so we can use tax revenue to transfer wealth and this will improve the equality of incomes between different people. But at the same time, if we tax people too much, we might discourage people from working and this might decrease productivity overall. And thirdly, uh, real people are very strategic, but this is very hard to model in any theory of optimal taxation. And this presents a very complicated problem in terms of modeling, but also in terms of finding a close form solution for what the tax should be in society. And so the goal of this work is to find the optimal trade-off where we get as close as possible to this hypothetical Pareto boundary uh, between equality and productivity and we want to compare this model with other baselines that have been established both in the real world, like the US federal taxes, but also the size tax formula, which is a theory uh, to compute optimal tax uh, formulas in simplified economies. So what we did was we built an economic simulation to study how this trade-off behaves in very complicated sequential economies. So we see two cartoons here. Uh, both show you a top-down view of a 2D world in which four agents can gather resources and earn money by building houses. So you can see, for instance, that the dark blue agent here is building a lot of houses in the middle of this world. And on the right, the pie charts show you how the income in this world is divided between the four agents. We can see that the dark blue agent is earning a lot of money, but if we use the AI economist, this dark blue agent actually makes a little bit less money um, but in fact, if we look at the trade-off between equality times productivity, we see that the AI economist actually achieves much better social outcomes than under the free market. And in the free market, there are no taxes at all and no transfer of wealth. The technique that we're using is two-level reinforcement learning. And the idea here is, is that in this world, both the workers that earn money as well as the government are controlled by an AI. And they're both jointly learning in this economy and both have their own objectives. So for an agent, uh, an agent, a worker in this world wants to optimize its own utility by burning as much money as possible, but balancing that against the amount of work that it has to do. On the other hand, the government observes the social welfare in the world. And in this case, that is the equality times productivity objective and 
uh, has to adjust the taxes to make sure that that uh, social welfare objective is maximized as much as possible. And this diagram shows you in a cartoon the learning process. And the critical part here is, is there are two learning loops. In the center, you see the red loop that uh, basically describes the agents that are learning. And at the same time, this AI government in the outer loop is looking at the reward function that these agents in the middle are experiencing and adjusting that. So this poses a big machine learning challenge because if we think from the perspective of the workers, their post-tax income might change during learning time as the taxes are being changed by the government. So another way of saying that is that during this learning process, any decision that a worker thought might, might have been optimal in the past might not be actually be optimal in the present. And this causes a very uh, uh, hard uh, problem uh, for us to solve. So in this work, we basically showed that there's a number of learning techniques that you can try, um, you know, and a number of them are actually successful. So the details of that is, are in the paper. Um, and what we've seen is that if we com basically compare the AI economists with the other baseline tax policies, we see that we can improve this equality of sense productivity by at least, by at least 16%. Um, so we compared it against the free market. So that, those are, there are no taxes at all. Then we took the U.S. federal tax rates from 2018, which basically represents a progressive tax system. And then also the SAS formula that is this theoretical optimal tax model, which in this case will lead to a regressive tax schedule. So to illustrate that, uh, here are uh, visualizations of these tax schedules on the left. Uh, again, the U.S. federal is progressive. So as in this case leads to a regressive schedule. And in the AI, AI economist, in fact, it shows a slightly different pattern, which is best interpreted as a blend of progressive and regressive tax rates. Um, and this figure on the left basically shows you what tax rates are for different uh, levels of income. And this is exactly how US taxes work uh, right now in, in the US. Now, What's important to note here is that because we have this sequential economy, we do have tax rates here that are average over 10 tax periods. So the taxes that the AI sets can actually vary year over year. Um, and what is uh, sort of striking here is that for instance, it seems like taxes are actually higher on the lower skilled, uh, lower income agents here. But if we actually look at the net subsidies, then the lower skilled agent actually receive more subsidies uh, at, in the end. And so we can see that on the right here, where we compare how the tax revenue is redistributed in society. Uh, and we see that actually the lower skilled agents that make less money actually are better off under the AI economist. Now, one uh, very nice feature of this economic simulation is that these AI agents are actually smart. Just like real people, they don't really like to pay taxes. And this leads to these AI agents trying to find tricks to gain the system. So one strategy is visualized here. Um, so the green line here represents an AI agent that learns that it can actually uh, vary how much it works year over year. So we're showing a simulation with, in which there are 10 tax years and every year this agent will work a certain amount. And if we compare that with a strategy where this agent would have worked the same amount of uh, time every year, we can see that this AI agent actually learns that by using a temporal strategy, it pays less tax over 10 years. And what's important here is that the baseline models here uh, typically don't account for these types of temporal strategies. Uh, and in particular, SAS does not account for this. Now, we also uh, asked ourselves what happens if real people are making real money in simulations like this. And so we took a first step at trying to evaluate this. So we built this web interface that you can see on the left, where real people would control these four agents and again, gather resources and earn money by, for every house that they build. And this is a much harder setting. And there's a lot of details here that again, for the sake of time, I will refer to the paper. But we've seen that the AI economists can also be effective in terms of improving the quality times productivity trade-off in this human study setting. 
And what you can uh, see here, for instance, is that if we look at the variation in outcomes, it's actually much higher for real people, which signals that uh, people are actually much more adversarial. And so they quickly use suboptimal strategies to block other people, for instance, from earning money. And this causes a much bigger, sw much bigger swing in the outcomes that we see in the human study compared to the AI simulation study. Now looking forward, um, we think of this as a really exciting intersection um, between AI and economics. Uh, for economists, we hope that this is really a new tool uh, to guide policymaking and thinking about what uh, effective economic policy is and how we might evaluate them in the future. Uh, reinforced learning is not something that economists typically use today, so we hope that they will also be interested in looking in the benefits of using these types of tools. And also, um, a big question is how we might transfer AI policies to the real world in the future. And thirdly, uh, we really have to think about, uh, you know, encoding social values and reward functions. So one big benefit of reinforcement learning is, is that you can give it any type of objective and principle. But then the question is, how do we take what we value in society and create a consistent uh, reward function that actually is robust uh, in you know, this AI uh, framework? Now, on the AI side, we hope that people will spend more time thinking about how to use types, these types of tools for social love for improvement. And that means that in this particular case, we want to improve the fidelity of these simulations uh, such that we can transfer AI policies more effectively from simulations to the real world. We need to incorporate real world data to ground these simulations. We need to make two level reinforcement learning more efficient. And um, last but not least, we also need to have a better control on the explanation of why an AI policy would decide to set tax rates as it did. And this is still a big uh, area of research. So uh, I'll close with that. There's actually a lot of information about this project. Um, I'll, I'll do a little plug for a NERVS workshop that's coming up that will be on machine learning for economic policy. And, and we also launched a moonshot around this uh, area of research. And I hope that um, many people will take a look at that and. Um, uh, engage with us on this particular research. Uh, thanks so much.